I stand before you tonight trembling with joy. Particularly for those of you who came the first night. You see, because I can tell you on behalf of my daddy that there is someone here tonight who will never know sorrow again. And, and, and I will explain that. I'm not going to be standing here for long. But I will soon get out of the way so we can do what God wants us to do. But you see, Israel could shout after Goliath had fallen. But while Goliath was still standing, David was already testifying. He was already saying, I have a God who took care of a lion. I have a God who took care of a bear. As for this Goliath, he said he's going to be off tonight. So for just five minutes, think of a song of your own that can talk about the greatness of God, about the power of God, about the ability of God, about the mercy of God, about the omnipotence of God. And sing it unto him. Sing unto him now. Sing unto him. Praise Him with your own song so that your Goliath we know is, is going tonight. He cannot survive tonight. mighty name we have worshipped. I have a Father, almighty Father, he is King of kings and Lord of lords. I have a Father, what about you? I have a Father, hallelujah. Mighty Father, is King of Kings, Lord of Lords. I have Hallelujah, Father, Hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords, the unchangeable changer, the Alpha and the Omega, the one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come, the Almighty God. Oh, glory be to your holy name. Daddy, we are proud of you. 
We thank you for what you've done in the past. We thank you that you're about to do something you've never done before. We give you all glory, all honor, because this is going to be a week the world itself will never forget. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Tonight we are just here to praise you, just to worship you. And as we do so, Father, please come down and reposition us. So that for the rest of our lives we will never know sorrow again. Thank you, Almighty God. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let someone shout a big hallelujah. Well, prophesy to somebody on your right and on your left and say, brother, sister, my joy is going to be greater than yours, you know. <laughs> you all welcome in Jesus' mighty name. Let me very quickly go to the Word of God. So I can be here for a few minutes and then get out of your way. You can have an opportunity to worship God. Isaiah chapter 61, from verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 61, from verse 1 to 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. When the Lord gave me the theme for this year's Congress, at first, I didn't quite understand. Uh, divine repositioning. Repositioning, that's a big name, big word. I prefer simple languages, simple words that market men and women can understand. But then as I began to break it down, Ah, how I rejoice. And when he said that we are starting the very first night with from weeping to garments of praise, ah, I knew my God wants to do something great. Because what, what is a garment? A garment is something you wear to cover your nakedness. So when what you will be wearing from now on will be praise as a garment. Huh. Let somebody shout praise the Lord. I want you to please believe me, it's not persuadable who thought this thing out, who just dreamt up a topic. I got it directly from my daddy in heaven. And when he speaks, 
It is done. You see, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, tells us that to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Then he went on to verse 4, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 4. He tells us that Weeping and mourning are for a season. That's good news. That's good news because it means weeping cannot last. It's only for a season. And I know quite a few of us are uh, we have one or two things we are crying quietly about. But the word of God made it clear, Psalm 30 verse 5, Psalm 30 verse 5, that weeping may endure for a night. What's coming in the morning? Say it loud and clear. And I decree in the name of the one who made heaven and earth. By the time the sun rises tomorrow, somebody will begin to rejoice forever. Yeah. Weeping cannot last. It's only for a season. And there is a God who changes times and seasons. Daniel chapter 2, from verse 20 to 21. Daniel 2, 20 to 21. It changes times and seasons. And it can terminate sorrow abruptly, unexpectedly, and permanently. It can terminate sorrow abruptly, unexpectedly, and permanently. In Luke chapter 7, from verse 11 to 15, Luke 7, 11 to 15, the Bible tells us of a widow, the widow of Nain. If anybody knew sorrow, that woman knew sorrow. Her husband had died before, left her with only one son. And now the one son was dead, and they were going to bury the son. Then the unchangeable changer came on the scene, stopped the procession to the graveyard, raised the boy from the dead. And for the rest of the life of that woman, she never wept again. I decree in the name of the one who called me. If someone listening to me today, you will never weep again. No, 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 I know that uh, some of us will say, hey, hold this, Pastor. I mean, <laughs> you know the Bible says we are to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. That's true. But weeping can be in two categories. There's the weeping, you are weeping for the one who is weeping. And that's different from the weeping when it is you who is weeping. <laughs> I was talking with a son of mine not too long ago. He said, when somebody loses a child, Sympathizers come, true and false sympathizers. They come, and some of them will weep while they are with you. 
Some of them will even roll on the ground. But as soon as they leave your house, they go back home to eat pan their yam. It is you who know where the fire is burning you that will. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, I pray in the name that's above every other name. There's someone here tonight who you will never know sorrow again. That's the purpose of tonight. Those of you who have never known sorrow, you will never know sorrow. Those of you who have known sorrow in a way that only God can do it. After tonight, no more sorrow. Within minutes, the Almighty God can bring you from the very death of sorrow and put you on the mountain top of praises. In John chapter 11, you can read it from verse 35 to 45. John 11, 35 to 45. In John 11, 35, the Bible says Jesus wept. But by the time we got to verse 45, <laughs> the cause of weeping had been removed. The irreversible had been reversed. One who had been dead for four days was back to life. I wasn't there then, but I'm sure there must have been some dancing and praising God that day. For how long can joy last? If it is God that gives you joy, the joy can last forever. Why? Weeping may endure for a night. Joy comes in the morning. Weeping belongs to night. Joy belongs to day. And according to Psalm 90 verse 4, Psalm 90 verse 4, the Almighty God can make your day last for a thousand years. I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm sure by now somebody knows that this is not an ordinary night. And this is not an ordinary congress. This one is going to be different. When I was studying Mark chapter 10 from verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, I suddenly realized that Bartimaeus was repositioned. He was repositioned from darkness to light, from sickness to health, From poverty to wealth, he never begged again. From stagnation to promotion. From loneliness to becoming the talk of the town. And I discovered it wasn't really the prayer, it wasn't how loud she shouted. It was what he said. That man said, Jesus, thou son of David. Ah. At least among my own people, among my tribe, 
We know when you want to get something very big from somebody, you begin to eulogize him by telling him a little bit of his history. You are the son of so and so, the son of so and so. When your father went to war, he defeated so many people, he captured so many slaves, etc., etc. That was exactly what Bartimaeus did that day. Jesus, I know you. You are the son of David. Your father was a giant killer. My problems are gigantic. But you, the son of the giant killer, you can solve the problem. Oh, when your father sang, darkness move out of the way. Your father sang for a king who was possessed with a demon. And when your father was singing, even the demons left that man alone because the demon wanted to hear the music. Jesus, I am being held captive by darkness. Do what your father did. Jesus, your father got, gathered together reef rafts. In 1 Samuel chapter 22, your father David gathered together all that was distressed, all those who are poor, all those who are hopeless. Your father turned all of them to mighty men. Mighty men. Jesus, I'm a nobody. Do what your father did. Turn me to someone. Jesus, when your father sang, the king sent for him. I'm alone here. I have no friends. Do what your father did. Whatever you have to do to bring me to the presence of the king, do it. I know who you are. You are the king of kings. Send for me. Jesus heard. I said, this fellow knows me. I think I will stand for him. See, somebody is going to worship God tonight in such a manner that the Lord himself would look down from heaven and say, hmm, this boy knows me. He knows my history. Uh, one of you angels there, go and bring him. We must reposition him tonight. We're going to praise God tonight. Let me, let, let me appeal to you. I've said this before. I want to say it again. If you can be grateful to God for what he has done in the past, he will do more. And the greatest evidence of pride is inability 
So praise God. That's the greatest evidence of pride. And God receives the proud. When it is time now to praise God, to sing, to dance, God will look down from heaven and see the way you are doing your own. And he will say, no, 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 that one is too big to be helped. That one is too important to need help. And then we see one fellow, see the fellow, the, the, the way the fellow is singing, the way the fellow is, say, ah, I think that one needs to be repositioned. God is about to reposition somebody tonight. Permanently away from sorrow. If you are the one, let me hear you say, it is me. <laughs> you can see the way it is said. But before we go ahead to praise God, because I've already said all he wants me to say. The Word of God made it abundantly clear that you cannot continue to praise him if you are living in sin. He doesn't want your praise. The Word of God says in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 8, Proverbs 15, verse 8. It says, even the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to him. If you have not made up your mind to stay away from sin, God does not want to hear your praise. That's why if you are here tonight and you have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, I will give you two minutes to get to the front. I'm going to count from one to ten, but I will count very fast. We can settle the case of salvation for you first before we then go ahead and praise the Lord. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, you can begin to come now. As I'm counting, one. Two. Three, before you go to the second session of praise, I'm going to ask my Father in heaven to uproot everything that has been causing you sorrow. And then I'm going to ask him to make sure you never know sorrow again. After I've prayed for you, the band will begin to lead. You sing. You dance. Uh, I will appeal to the band that um, maybe they make this uh, second session a little, <laughs> I would like to call it a little jelenke. <laughs> And that first session was uh, for only those who are not as old as myself. And there are some older people here today. We want to dance to God. We want to show Him we appreciate Him. So you please go at our, at our speed, okay? God bless you. Now, so if you don't want to know sorrow anymore, for the rest of your life, stand on your feet and shout a very big hallelujah.
my Father and my God, ancient of days, I thank you very, very, very much for this year's Congress. I thank you because I know you that whatever you say you want to do is already done. And I thank you especially for those who are listening to us right now, especially those who are here on day one. Ah, Father, before sun rises tomorrow, let sorrow be far gone from their lives. When the widow of Nain was going to bury her son, and you met her and said, weep not. It is because you went right to the root of her sorrow. And you uprooted the mountain. Everything causing any of your children sorrow here tonight. Father, uproot. Whatever they think about that dampens their joy, whatever it may be, terminate it tonight. Whatever it is, small or big, some of us, like myself, have known the bitterness of losing a child. Some of your children, too, they know what is called bitter sorrow, things they can't even explain. Sorrows that they cover with a strong, bold face. Sorrows that while they are smiling on the surface, they are weeping inside. Whatever it is that had caused us sorrow thus far, my Father, my God, deal with it tonight. Some people look around. They see their classmates, they see their colleagues. They see those who are not even worshiping you the way they are worshiping you. They see them apparently making progress having everything that's supposed to make life worth living. And then they look at themselves and they say, oh God, oh God, oh God. Whatever it is, Lord, in the lives of your children that is not allowing their joy to be full, deal with it tonight. And then in your own miraculous way, the way only you can do it. From the lives of all of us, anything in the future that can cause us sorrow, remove, O oh Lord. As we worship you tonight, 
that garment of praise. That garment that we will wear with pride. That garment that people will see in our lives and say, no doubt about it. God has favored this fellow. Ah, my Father and my God, release unto us. My Father, my God, once upon a time there was one of your children. He's resting between glory now. Every day you see him, he's beaming with joy. You ask him, he's always having one testimony or the other. His name became Mr. Testimony. My Father, my God, I pray tonight concerning every one of your children, the garment of praise that only you can give, give to all of us. And forever, oh Lord, let our tomorrow be all right. Thank you, almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.